the government conducted a review of stake and prize limits for all categories of gaming machine, including fixed odds betting terminals. We took advice from the Gambling Commission and the Responsible Gambling Trust Strategy Board. Our review was published earlier this month. Lucy Powell. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. The Minister will be aware that last week, in answer to my, uh, a question from my honourable friend, the member for West Bromwich East, the Prime Minister said that he would look again at the damaging effects of fixed odd betting terminals. Can she tell us when this review will begin and what form it will take? Well, this is, of course, a, a very serious issue indeed, and the future of these B2 gaming machines is certainly unresolved, pending further work, which has actually already started. Tracy Crouch. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Minister will be aware that the Kent Messenger recently reported that gamblers across Kent and Medway lost £33 million on FOB tees, including £1.6 million in my constituency and £1.9 million in her own constituency. Does she agree, therefore, that we really need to have this proper look at the devastating impact that these high risk, high stake machines are having on our constituents? Yes, well, I do remember reading that article in, in uh, the, the Kent Messenger, and I would just like to emphasise uh, to my honourable friend that there is certainly no green light for fixed odds betting terminals, and we will be reviewing. We will be reviewing their existence and their functioning very carefully. Mr. Tom Watson. The mistakes that are taken by these machines are so great that they have become a magnet for money laundering gangs. Bookmakers Corals have recently been exposed for taking £900,000 worth of money laundering money. The serious organised crime agencies think it's the problem is so great that they should be that bookmakers should be included in money laundering directives from the EU, which is currently under review. Can the minister tell me her view of that? Well, my, my view is, as I, I keep repeating, the, these machines uh, uh, present a serious issue. Uh, but what we need is a fair and decent approach to the issue of problem gambling, uh, whilst also not over-regulating bookkeepers. Therefore, we need to do our research, look at the matter in detail, so that we can come up with a balanced and sensible and fair way forward. Mr. David Nuttall. Mr. Speaker, uh, does the Minister agree that one effect of allowing gaming machines uh, of the B2 variety in bookmakers' shops is that they help maintain the viability of these officers, oh, yeah. providing employment for local people oh, and yeah, providing yeah. an environment where those who do have a problem with gambling are more likely to be identified and pointed in the direction of the help they need yeah. than if they were to sit at home gambling on the internet, where incidentally they'll be able to gamble any amount that they like. Yeah, yeah. I do think he, he, he makes a, a fair point, and a, as, I've just, as I've just explained, we, we need a proper, balanced and decent approach. We do not want to over-regulate bookkeepers, but of course it's a priority. It's a priority for this government that we protect the vulnerable. Simon Wright. Question five, Mr Speaker. We are working with the Gambling Commission, the Responsible Gambling Strategy Board, the Responsible Gambling Trust and the industry itself to rapidly advance our understanding. Dealing with problem gambling and protecting the vulnerable are priorities for this Government. Mr. Simon Wright. A recent study conducted in the London Borough of Newham found 87% of gamblers believe B2 machines to be addictive, and many describe them as the crack cocaine of gambling. Can the Minister assure gamblers that the Government will listen to their personal evidence and experiences and respond to them as a matter of urgency? Yes, well, I, I certainly can give, give that absolute assurance. The Government will examine all relevant research and evidence in relation to these machines. We need to develop a proper understanding prior to taking any action, if we decide to take action, in order to ensure consumer protection. Mr. Ian Lavery. Mr. Speaker, has the Minister read the Association of, of British Bookmakers uh, Code for Responsible Gambling in Players Protection and Licensed Betting Officers document, which has been recently released? And if so, can she say if, uh, in her opinion, it goes any way to allay the fears of many members of this House? Minister. 
Well, no, on, on the basis I've only been in the job about three weeks, I, I have to be honest with, with the Honourable Member. I haven't read uh, the, the, the document uh, that, that he's mentioned page to page, but I can say that I'm very happy to look at it and I will come back to him on those issues. Mr Philip Davis. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I refer people to my entry in the Register of Interests. Is the, is the Minister aware that virtually every new, every new gambling product since about 90, the 1970s has been referred to as the crack cocaine of gambling? <laughs> and that this, that to think that this is uh, unique is ridiculous. That given that people can lose an unlimited amount of money within a minute on a five furlong sprint to Epsom, that the opposition to the FOB tees is ridiculous, particularly given that it has a bigger rate of return to the punter, 97%, than any other gambling product in any betting shop or any casino or anywhere else for that matter. Well, well I, I do think my honourable friend makes, uh, again, some interesting issues, but I would like to say that, that work has begun on this issue. We will be looking at all of the evidence and all of the research, and in addition to this, we will be putting pressure on the industry to develop their own harm mitigation measures and to ensure that those measures work and that they evaluate their success. Mr. Kelvin Hopkins. Mr. Speaker, these wicked machines are destroying lives and destroying families in the, some of the poorest areas of our country. Uh, Ireland has banned these machines. Shouldn't we just simply follow them? Minister. Well, as I repeatedly say, that, that, that uh, the future uh, of these machines is, is not set in stone. There is no green light for fixed odd bettings terminals, and their future will be kept carefully <coughs> under review. Mr. Ben Bradshaw. Question six, Mr. Speaker. 